So hopefully we'll be able to finish um, this chapter today because again, um, as I have said, can you stop now, uh, Kazakh brings what he's calling types of mediums on the, on the, on the good side, you know, or what he calls the good mediums that they start in 197. In both when we call the imperfect mediums, mediums and we give all those types of mediums, the mediums for hiding, hiding for hire, the mediums of a bad faith, the selfish mediums, and also bring the now the good mediums, the serious, the modest, the devoted, the first word. In reality, he, he, he's telling us the moral progress of the spirit who has the attribute, it has the, uh, the, the, the talent of mediumship. And of course that mediumship somehow you reflect the moral qualities of the spirit as our moral qualities are reflected in just about everything that we do. It's, we can take it away from us. It is a part of us. And, and that part of us we expressed in every activity that we go ahead to do it. You know, the, the corrupted mind will be corrupted in any kind of activity, playing in sports, uh, doing the work on a bank, doing the work, uh, swiping the floors, and, and the trustworthy will be trustworthy in every active, activity that he or she does. And the same thing with leadership. So in reality, what Kardec presents here is not types of leadership, so it's types of human beings. And, and how that moral quality or lack of it reflects in the practice of leadership. So we, we think so far the serious, the modest, the devoted, I believe that's where we stopped. And today I continue with the trust word medium. And the reminder as I said last week is that even it's hard to, to add anything to it to have any comments. Okay, because again, uh, it's not dealing with the leadership itself, but it's dealing with the moral, or lack of it, qualities of mediums, and how does it affect the practice of mediumship? Okay, so uh, you continue at first, first word medium. I believe that's where we stopped, unless anybody has a different stopping time. Okay, who's going to read? Yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> I was okay. mute. Okay, trustworthy mediums. Those who, besides the ease with which they receive communications, merit great confidence due to their own character and the elevated nature of the spirits who assist them. They are less likely to be deceived. Later, we shall see that this trustworthiness has nothing to do with the respectability of the names taken by spirits. It is undeniable, and you must well understand that by exposing the qualities and defects of mediums in this way, you will provoke annoyance and even animosity on the part of some. But what does it matter? Mediumship is expanding more and more, and mediums who were to take these remarks badly would only show that they are not good mediums which means that they are actually assisted by less evolved spirits. Moreover, as I have already stated, all this shall quickly pass and the bad mediums who abuse their abilities or put them to bad use will suffer sad consequences. As has already been the case with some, they will learn at their own cost the consequences for turning a gift that God has given them 
for their own moral progress and to satisfying their earthly passions. If you cannot lead them back onto the moral path, pity them, for you may say that God has reproved them, Eratius. So, one, th one, one thing to mess up to the philosophy of Mark over here is that he's talking about the idea of psychography, okay? With, so, this, talking about mediums when you receive master, you write that. Mm -hmm. If someone has, and let's assume that we deserve it. Um, instead of to be trustworthy, and someone is considered to be the opposite of it, and one that has a, has a problem trying to be deceiving, try, trying to, to put himself where he doesn't really belong yet. Um, Unfortunately, we do make those kind of, of judgments and unfortunately that's our nature. But if a person has, is considered to be trustworthy, if a person is considered to be reliable, that you can count on that person, you are more, like, more likely to accept whatever this person brings to you if the predicts the first come to come to you and tell something you're more likely like to believe that person you're more likely to take seriously that person than one who has the opposite kind of of personality why would that be different if that person is a mean? Will be the same. A mirror receive, receives a message that brings the message to you, and uh, and 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 the mirror say, and the mirror says, "I have this message is from Abraham Lincoln that I received." It may be, it may not be. We have to do the investigation ourselves. But it comes someone that is supposed to be a trust word you are more likely to take it serious and do a more serious investigation. Fortunately, that's the case. Also, someone who does not deserve the same kind of consideration. Someone who has proof multiple times to not be trustworthy. You are less likely to take that communication serious, to, to put the same effort of investigation that you would come from a trust, trustworthy need. So, in reality, our moral qualities will really dictate it, not only the value of the masses, because again, we will assimilate, we will vibrate at the same level of the spirits that we will write to us. And again, talking about psychography, but talking about views, uh, we write messages of spirits for us. We're not talking about here work of assistance, but then it's different. Here, the, the moral quality of the medium will, will have an effect because we, the medium will vibrate at a higher or lower level. And, Natural, you assimilate, you enter in contact with with spirits who are vibrated about the same the same range, so to say, of uh, of moral qualities. And of course, if it is a trustworthy medium, we will take those messages a lot more serious and require we, again if it requires some investigation, just about everything to require some kind of investigation. We'll put a lot more attention to it than we'll talk someone who has the opposite kind of, uh, or have show, shown to us to have a different kind of disposition. 
and, and then at us come and, and bring this message that when 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 they bring this what is differentiations of mediums, it, it may create a problem. It may create a problem for those who are already are not very fond of this thing called talking to the dead. They say, oh, I'm not going, I'm not going for there. But that will change. That will change because we are changed, because we are mature. If a medium is not willing to hear a a just criticism, naturally you see that that's already a big red flag. If a medium is not willing to say, we need to do some more investigation on the message. It's, it's, it's very unlikely that this message of this type of actually came from Abraham Lincoln that really uh, we have, we see something we hear that is unlikely that this message comes from Socrates. The more educated, the more um, morally educated you let's say, yeah, let's do the investigation. Because I myself don't want to be uh, writing psychographies that does not deserve any merit, that does not deserve any credit. The more prideful me to say, no, who are you? I know what I'm talking about. I the one who received the message. I know that well it was Jesus. He was kind of given this message, believe it or not, and if you don't want to believe it, it's your body. As we progress, mediums like us will completely lose credibility. Will, if they are lucky, they will lose uh, the privilege of, of the of the of the talent of mediumship. We may be taken away from them, and they're protecting for themselves. But if this is a becomes a trial in that spirit, we will continue receiving receiving messages to it to be able to educate him or herself and, and and vibrate at a higher level where those deceiving spirits will not make use of that medium. Um. The last to make sure we're here that there is also a Jew of the of the of the spirits that they associate that teaches that they, they assist uh, those spirit those mediums with the mediumship. This is besides our no, this is what this is besides um, our guardian angel. This is besides the the spirit that has assumed the responsibility to assist us in, in, in our reincarnation, and perhaps even beyond the reincarnation. But you have to remember that this, this guardian angel, the spiritual guide, must respect our beauty. Must respect our ability to make choices on to whom we choose to listen to. To whom we will put our talent of uh, leadership to manage our talent of all, to manage the, uh, our talent of leadership. If, it's, if you tell my, if I tell my guardian angel, my protecting spirit, say, very well, just step out. I this the guy who will be the manager, so to say, of my uh, leadership. That guardian angel, that spiritual guy, that guardian angel. I said, yeah, it's all right. If that's your choose to do, it's your right. You know, it's a free will. There will be consequences. And perhaps with um, if that medium is, is luckier, they say, okay, so you're gonna put a, a break on on your leadership for a while. You're gonna put a hold on it for a while until you educate yourself a little bit more, and then perhaps you walk with it again. But very often that's not going to be the case. And very often those those needles will be assisted by lower level spirits, and that's why he uh, says over here, leadership is expanding more and more, and the needles who were to take these remarks badly would only show that they are not 
uh, the mediums, which means that they are actually assisted by less evolved spirits. I think that's important to make sure that we differentiate that this being assisted by less evolved spirits doesn't mean that they have less evolved uh, uh, spiritual guides or bargain angels. Okay. Okay, questions, comments? Carol, you have a question? Um, yeah, you have a question. Um, no, 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 okay. <laughs> I think we're on good. Okay, well, let's continue. Okay. This table is of great importance not only for the sincere mediums who in reading it will seek in good faith to save themselves from the stumbling blocks to which they may be exposed, but also for those who make use of mediums because it will provide them with a measure of what they can reasonably expect. The table as well as the spirit scale, which is its supplement, should constantly be before those who concern themselves with manifestations. These two tables summarize all the principles of the doctrine and will contribute more than you might think toward leading spiritism onto its true path, Socrates. Okay. Uh, so basically it's everything we already have said a bit here. Uh, Socrates just reinforced what uh, Erastus uh, just said. But with the addition and which can make the reference, but those who make use of um, of mediums also, and by make use of mediums nowadays, those who are reading um, messages that be written, psychographed uh, messages, and especially these days, I have to be extremely careful when it, it has become more popular, especially let's say in Brazil, in which. There is a large number of individuals who like to read the psychographic uh, texts, being it more, more technical or being it more uh, romance, especially the romances. If we, if you look at the romances, kind like romances that being um, psychographed by spirit, by humans like. Chico Xavier, like the uh, uh, Givaldo uh, and some others, you see that the romance is nothing more than a attractive, you know, to, to get us to learn some very important moral lessons. They will quote that model important lessons with a romance to make it easier and more attractive for us to read it. But they do not have the intention of publishing a romance. They have an intention to publish a, a, a book of moral teachings content. As if when we, if you're gonna give, let's say, a pill to your dog, and you put it inside of something, uh, a some kind of treat, so the dog will take uh, that that medication. But in reality, it's just a cult that that it's attractive to the dog that will make the dog swallow that necessary medication. And unfortunately, today you see a tremendous amount of psychographic romances, if they did truly psychographic and have no reason to say that they are not, I believe they are psychographic, but with no, 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 no highly content or secure, simple uh, romance. And for that, why do you need the psychography? Plenty of that. And more important than that, very bad quality romances. And even worse than that, um, romance that 
closer against the reality of the spiritual world. Goes against the, the, the realities that it's taught to us in, 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 in spirit, yes, the relationship of, of um, Ikarat and Ikarat, they distort the truth very much so. So naturally, those mediums who are using mediumship for that, which produce this kind of work, are responsible. And they are deeply responsible because they are spreading false support. They're just spreading bad quality writings. Right? But when they distort the truth, when they take, they produce falsehood and put it out there for everyone, less prepared to read, they read, they will believe it. And that medium carries tremendous amount of responsibility. Right? So it's important that the medium educate you know, on ourselves, but it's also important that. We who consume that kind of material educate ourselves to be able to separate things of value with things with no value. Because again, if I if I end up in the spirit world tomorrow and decide that I want to be the white romance, when I could find them. A medium and uh, write my romance through that medium, and I guarantee you it's gonna be something pretty close to garbage. But just because it comes from the spiritual world now, somebody says that it's good, and in reality, I have no ability to, to write a romance. And without a physical body, I'm not gonna be any better with the same element, just minus the physical body. And whatever I produce here, it will be the same quality of what I produce there. It is because it's a conflict with something that can say, oh, it's good. it comes from the spiritual there. And so on. But again, if it's just a bad quality, it's just a bad quality. You want to read it, it's a joy, it's a problem. But when, when, it, when it, 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 it tells lies, then it's become a, a problem. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 198. All the above mediumistic varieties present innumerable degrees of intensity. There are many that, strictly speaking, do not comprise more than simple nuances, but are nevertheless the result of special aptitudes. We must realize that. Only very rarely is the mediumistic faculty strictly limited to one type. A medium can undoubtedly have several aptitudes, but they will always be a predominant one. And this is the one that should be cultivated if it is useful. It is a grave mistake to want to in any way force the development of a faculty that one does not possess. On the other hand, it is necessary to cultivate all those that one possesses in a germinal state. However, to seek others is a waste of time in the first place. And in the second, it could mean the loss and the certainty and weakening of those that already exist. Thanks. Okay. 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 <coughs> so very important, so there's a shift over here, right? You see that in one and now, but the is not only talking about the the more qualities, but the types of leadership now, right? Now it's talking about what we read in the beginning of the of this chapter of the different types of uh, of leadership. And if you go back there, we we can see the ministry of education. We have to go back and read it here. Uh, the spontaneous communication. Um, the flexible mediums, the laconic medium, the many different types of mediumship, right? And as we had said then, Kadek here is summarizing that it's very likely that a medium will be, that you'll be able to 
put a helium in one box and say, you are this type of thing. That's what you do. You are the type that when you write, you, you, your writing you will be on, you fit inside of this box. You, if you're a historian, medium, all you're gonna write is historic facts. No, the most of us, uh, the most millions have multiple uh, attributes, have multiple uh, uh, abilities. That I mean, it's important I mean, to understand that he or she has given that uh, ballot to serve. He or she was given that opportunity to bring the best of that talent that they have. So if a medium has the ability of receiving, primarily let's say psychographies of a, a more technical topic, so I don't know, physics and astronomy, or whatever, the medium should try to develop that ability that's to the best of its ability and not be so concerned of getting some other types. Some other types will naturally happen in a, in a natural process of maturation of this of the medium, maturation of that organic exposition of the medium. Another thing to consider is the necessity for that medium expand another another talent. Let's assume that in a group where many mediums have pretty much the same kind of talent, then um, and, and the spiritual direction directors of the house say, oh, we have a group of spirits over here who are really in need to use a, a more flexible medium over here. They may choose one who already has that flexibility in view and, and, and develop, open up that a little bit more. But that comes from there and also from here that we, that we notice that you have this talent, perfect our talent the best of our world. Because we are just an instrument used by the spirits. And if you are in a trust of the environment, if you are in a In a place, let's say, that practice leadership with Jesus, it should be uh, in the spirituals. Then it's possible of being an instrument without pressure, without saying, why am I doing this? Why he or she is doing that? At the point that the minister to ask why he or she is doing this and that and I'm not, it's already a red flag. I see a problem of pride over there, or I see a problem of perhaps a jealousy over there. Right? That you should, that, that in a proper environment, in a relationship with Jesus, you should not have. So, although we, we do have different types of leadership, we have a predominant one. And that's what I really should cultivate as a, as a leader of the year. And not try to to develop things that we don't have. It's not that, it's not that. If it shows it's, that it's mature and that it start to, to show up, let it happen naturally. Do not force anything, as I say, to see God is a waste of time in the first place. Because if you don't have that natural disposition, you don't. And all it's going to do is take you away from work in what you already have, developing, making good what you already have. Okay. Uh, questions, comments? Almost done here, let's go. Okay. When the principle or seed of a faculty exists, it always expresses itself through unmistakable signs. If they would limit themselves to their own specialty, mediums could perfect it and obtain grand and beautiful results. However, if they concern themselves with everything, 
they will not get any good results. In passing, it should be noted that the desire to indefinitely extend the habit of one's faculty is pretentious pride, which the spirits never leave unpunished. Good spirits always forsake the presumptuous, who then become the target of deceiving ones. Unfortunately, it is not uncommon to see mediums who are not content with the faculties they have received and who, out of vanity or ambition, aspire to possess exceptional ones that they believe will make them famous. Such pretense takes away their most precious quality, being regarded as trustworthy mediums, Socrates. So we just we just had the the you know, just actually thinking of that the other day. Oh, great audience! How many of you with uh, tremendous physical potentials? He's looking at all the all the type of sports, you know, handball, volleyball, basketball, soccer, uh, gymnastics, uh, track and field, swimming, diving. One would say that all of those athletes over there have tremendous physical potential and tremendous athletic abilities. But in order to really be as good as they are in one or another, they have to dedicate themselves to one or another, at least a lot more than the others. Otherwise, they would not be able to do that yet. Same thing with, with mediums, of course, not talking about competition here. But if we spend our lives trying to be good in a hundred things, chances are there are going to be mediocre at a hundred things. We have to zero in, we have to pump, that's what concentrate means. To concentrate, to put our attention at the center. Something should be the center of our attention that we zero in in order to develop ourselves to be the best and that we don't need to ignore everything else. But that is the thing that I zero in, that I target, that I, because that's the thing that I see over here that is where I can better serve. And you see the winner that, 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 that is a good target to make yourself the best as possible being that kind of medium doing this kind of work. After all the things happen, they happen as well. Because if again, try to spread yourself too thin in a hundred things, chances are you're not going to be able to do a lot of them. If you just mediocre at another thing, and if you zero in on one thing, then you put you know, energy on that, you could do that one thing. And uh, when we have the talent to be A, but B seems to be more prestigious because the green is always greener at the neighbor's um, lawn, of course. We want to go over there. Then we go over there and see that the other neighbor have even greener pasture and you keep moving on and on and on. And you, Never allow yourself to be really good at the thing that you have at your hand. Perhaps, it, indeed, it's less glamour, but you make yourself bad at that, and you'll be recognized for being bad, bad, good at that. You know, if, if you are good at singing, you recognize a good at singing, and, and then because you I go at, at, at singing, now you want to be an actor, maybe you recognize as a bad actor. It's a good thing, but a bad actor. So stick to what uh, you love that there was. Give it to you for a reason. There was that you developed for a reason. Use it to the best of your, of your ability. Don't be so concerned with the other things. If they develop, do not reject. Let them. Let they develop, tell it, let them mature, and let for them to use as well. Okay.
move on. Okay. Uh, 199. Okay, 199. Studying the specialties of mediums is necessary, not only for mediums themselves, but also for those who call upon them. According to the nature of the spirit whom one may want to evoke, and depending on the questions one wishes to ask, it is imperative to choose the most capable medium. Resort, resorting to the first one who comes along is to expose oneself to receiving unsatisfactory or erroneous responses. Let us make a comparison using ordinary facts. We have not trust an ordered original draft or even a simple copy to the first person to come along only because he or she knew how to write. A musician wants an excerpt of a song he has composed to be performed. There are several singers at his disposal, all of whom are skillful. However, he will not choose at random. For his interpreter, he will try to find the one who has the voice, the capacity for expression, all the qualities that best correspond to the nature of the, of the piece. Spirits do likewise concerning mediums as we must do likewise concerning spirits. <laughs> okay. Uh, finish. finish, okay. We must further note that the variations presented through mediumship and to which others may be added are not always according to the character of the mediums themselves. Thus, for example, a natural, joyful, and jovial medium may have been habitually received serious, even severe, communications and vice versa. This is yet another proof that mediums act under the impulse of an outside influence. We shall return to this subject in the chapter dealing with the moral influence of the, of the medium. Okay. We're gonna do this moral influence of the medium later. And uh, I'd like to analyze this, 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 uh, this chapter which was very encouraging, it was encouraging to us. But as a mixed society, society is a better society. A um, society that is open to a, a variety of, of individuals is, is, is a better society. This is a nation brings, brings progress to us because each one has something to do. That each one of us is something of value, and when you add up what each one of us has to provide, it makes all of us better. And, and the same thing with mediumship, there are different types of medium, but the end product of the work that comes from, from the mediums will be better when there is this kind of, of, of differentiations of abilities of mediums. I like very much the example of, uh, of the singers. The, the composer writes a piece and, and uh, he had at his disposal many good singers and he started, they are good. They are good. But among singers, there's those who are different from one another. The goals are better expressing uh, different notes or different, different kinds of things. And the composer, you pick the one that better suits the work that you have with you. It doesn't mean that the work, the others are not good. Those are equally good, but doing for doing something else. Perhaps you would pick another singer for a different type of, of music. The same thing with mediums here. Let's say in a group, in a leadership meetings, where you have four, five, six, ten different mediums, it is wonderful that the spirit directors have in their disposition that many different of mediums because they will be able to match the spirit in accordance to the medium to produce the best possible psychography. 
to work a medium, let's say, historian, and who has that link and that ability to write of historic factors for many different reasons. And here comes a student who wants to relate something that happened during World War II that is meaningful. And, and the, the director of that leadership meeting is able to match that spirit who's going to bring this message with historical content to a medium who is more like to better reproduce the thoughts of that medium. That, that is the best match. Likely, if they don't have such a medium, they will do the best. They use whatever they can get, so to say. Okay. But when we are able to create that match, everybody works. Everybody profits from that. The more involved in spirit, we work with whatever they have at hand. But I learned about this, we say, oh no, this guy of that, of that medium cannot reproduce what I have to offer. I'd rather not put the work right now, right or wrong. And the, in, in the depends on the, the quality of the, of the nature of the material, that may be a, the right thing to do. Of music. You know, let's say that, that the cover decides to write a piece of music with someone who does not have the musical, musical sensibility. I think it's that appropriate that Beethoven says, I was off and on. I'll wait. I mean, wait for a century, I'll wait another, I'll wait another century to, until the right medium shows up. You know, which is kind of Beethoven going to be waiting for someone with his music. Quality is going to be what for a long time. <clears throat> but the more I've always been, they say, well, that's what I have. I'll use what I have. I'm using for the best spirit. But if I'm able to match type of spirit, type of communication with the best possible healing, everyone gets. We would going to benefit from to read or to hear that message in your benefit. And then, again, saying that all the meetings are equally good. Or well, one has a tendency to be better doing this kind of work. The other one has a tendency to be better doing the other kind of work. Let's say uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a team, right? Uh, basketball, there's one that's better at defending, there's one that's better at shooting, there's one, one that's better at blocking, but they make one team and the team makes almost together. At the end, they will win and they lose together. And they, and they likely to win if each one uses their potential to the best. If it's not in score, they're not score, but they better do whatever they do, pass them or not. So it is necessary. And if you have a team of which everyone is good at scoring, like that team is not going to win. Because I have to defend those, I have to block those, I have to do all those things in, in the game as well. It's not always scoring. And, and if you're all five in the field wants to be the scorer, that's a team that not going to be very successful. And hopefully they'll learn that other way. Questions, comments? We finish the long, long chapter, and we can start something that I think is more relevant: is the development of needles. Okay. The development of mediums. Development of mediumship, 200. We are here particularly addressing writing mediumship because this is the most widespread kind and also because it is at the same time the simplest and most convenient and the one that provides the most satisfactory and complete results. Furthermore, it is the one most sought after. At present, unfortunately, there is still no means of diagnosing even roughly, those who possess 
this faculty. The physical signs that some take as indications are uncertain, and we may find it in children, old people, men and women, whatever their temperament, health status, or degree of intellectual and moral development may be. There is only one way to assert its existence, experimentation. Go on. Okay. As we have already seen, writing may be obtained by using baskets and pochettes or directly by hand. Since this last method is the easiest and the only one used nowadays, it is the one we recommend. The process is quite simple, consisting merely in taking a pencil and paper and putting oneself in a writing position. No other preparation is needed. Nonetheless, several recommendations are indispensable for obtaining a good result. So, when you hear the word development of, of mediums or development of leadership, we are not talking about creating, so to say, the leadership or developing a medium. We are talking about getting that seed that is already there in a, in a, in a spirit, in an incarnated spirit, and nurture that seed so it can go and, and become a plant and provides fruit. Because we are born mediums, and you're talking about extensive mediumship, um, with a larger open window to the spiritual world than most of us, because we are all mediums at a much smaller scale. We're talking about mediums with a extensive ability of interact of, with uh, spirits in a much ample sort of way. Uh, individual, uh, a lot more ability of expand its very spirit to be more on the spiritual dimension than the physical dimension, and that you have it or you don't have it. You're born with it or you're not born with it, period. Now, if you're born with it, then you need to develop it. You have to nurture it, you have to educate it. And that's what you talk, we are talking about here. And we are talking specifically here, concentrate primarily on, um, on the psychography, because as Kardec says, that's one that is like the more common, that's one that produces the, the most desirable fruit, because it's the one that you can investigate, that you can save, that you can make crops and distribute. So it's one that is, in general, is, is more useful. For the great, um, for the great good, not discrediting any one of the others. Okay. Um, not say that psychopathy does play wonderful is a wonderful tool. Not say that physical phenomena is a wonderful tool when used, let's say, in a work of uh, spiritual surgery, so to say. Everything carries its value. Okay. Uh, that clear will stress, most in psychography, but most of the others is pretty much the same as well. They all need to be nurtured, they all need to be uh, developed, they all need to be perfected as well. Okay? Um, now, how do we know who is a needle? How do we know who has that seed that needs to be watered and fed so we can produce food eventually. Uh, is it more likely to be male or female? Is it more likely to be the younger or the older? Is it more likely to be, to be on this at the ethnic group than the other the ethnic group? None, none of those, none of the both. We don't know. It's, it's, Leadership is spread out equally 
to all ages and groups and we don't know and the only way to know is to put it to experimentation. It's only by trial. It's only by placing ourselves and inputs of the data with uh, paper and pencil at hand, uh, trying to concentrate and then try to add thoughts that perhaps are yours or perhaps are not yours. Naturally, in the very beginning, we put, um, the potential medium of psychography will doubt you or herself a lot. It's expected, it's normal. Okay, but eventually you'll be able to distinguish clearly uh, his or her own thoughts from a thought of a third, a third party. Okay? And that is how you actually will who is the medium who is not the medium. We did that, that experiment at experiment, um, the very beginning of our, of our leadership meetings a few years back in which all of us were on it with paper and pencil in hands and we tried who would receive thoughts that would write. Some did, some did not. I probably did not. There was one person start to draw. Well, that the drawing she was she was convinced that those drawings are not from her own mind. But the only way to do is is by trying it. And without fear of oh this this is me writing. Maybe it is, but the only way to try to test is to do it. And to do it and to do it, and eventually, one will you be comfortable of being a medium or not being a medium of, uh, of psychology. We're going to talk here primarily psychology, okay? Questions, comment? I don't think it's worth to move on. Is anybody has any comment regarding this? Hey, um, I got a quick question. Yes. Um, so the way that this is uh, de uh, developed, the, the psychography in this case we are discussing, it is, uh, does this uh, um, change from country to country to country, maybe culture? Because, you know, uh, for example, in Brazil, you know, even though you're not sure if the person has that seed, as you explain, they go through classes and everything. And after that, they, you know, they study before, even though they don't know if you have or not, but you have to have the knowledge first and then you test it. Um, we've seen also on that movie, uh, After Life, I'm not, I'm not sure, in England, I think. There was also, you know, institutes that, you know, try to develop the mediumship as well. Um, beginning with the studies and everything and afterwards working with the seed. But there are in certain places they, you know, they, are, they only work with people they already manifest that disposition in order to, to do the work. So does that as a, like a common ground or rule or differs from place to place? We are talking of, uh, of leadership in accordance to spiritualism. So everything that you, that you read here, that you pass to others in our studies in accordance with spiritualism, is accordance with the, with the guidance of the, the spirit of truth, of the spirits like Erastus, like Socrates, that are just other names over here. On, uh, on how to initiate uh, in mediumship in accordance to, to, to spiritualism. Um, you, you already went ahead and we're going to read it here. That is the, the, the theory before the practice, of course. Not that we gonna gonna come to our world and say, hey, let's, let's go with a medium here today without having any basis of, of, the, of the theory first. 
of the theory of the practice will be the last thing after you understand at least pretty well and be able to start practicing that will facilitate you to be more aware of your own thoughts or someone else's thought, thoughts. So in accordance with spirit, with spirit is, yes, you will understand the theory first, and then you'll be in a protected, safe environment, test our mediumist ability to see if we have it or not. If other uh, groups back in different way, I cannot criticize if it's they are better or they are worse. If it works, if it not works. But I, I'm, I'm sure there are different ways that uh, different groups will initiate or will test uh, the business ability of the participants. What we teach here is in accordance to, to spirit is with the, with the guidance of the spirit of truth. I'm sure there are different ways that people do it differently somewhere else. And I don't know if we have time, but out of curiosity, um, different from psychophony, uh, psychophony is not something that like, like takes you over and you just start writing like, uh, like happens in psychophony sometimes that the, the spirit, you know, if the person is not training, is not in a proper place and everything else, maybe, you know, become a, something out of control, right? In terms of psychography. A psychography, uh, I imagine here, that requires um, a more prepared side. Uh, seeding or placement, right? To begin with, you need to have uh, something to write with and, and something to write on. So you have a pen or a pencil and a, or a booklet or something like that for you to, to write. It perhaps required a, a little more of, of, um, of preparation in order, in order to, to practice psychology. And psychophony, you know, you just need to start speaking. So I think it's more likely to have a spontaneous psychophony than a spontaneous psychography, but both will be with an untrained, unprepared media. Because in a more educated media would have control, better control of that faculty and would not uh, allow that faculty to be used by spirits in inappropriate times, inappropriate place. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? We'll continue next week. We'll make a final prayer for us, please. Okay. I'll make the final prayer. Thank you. To our beloved Jesus, our spiritual benefactors, we have come here in participation of our lessons today. With gratitude, we thank you, allowing us to continue learning the varieties of writing mediums, special mediums, the differences, the development of mediums that are so important for us to understand in learning mediumship itself. We thank you, we thank you, dear Lord, for that. For the teachers that continue to inspire us in teaching us all that is so necessary for us, our development and evolving. We pray, dear Father, for all those that are going through seriousness of struggles and suffering. May we continue with our prayers throughout the week. We pray for enlightenment for each who are in dire need of prayers, who have gone through their transition, all that are struggling, dear Father, may our prayers lift and help them through their struggles. We pray for our Spiritist Group of New York, our teachers, our mentors, our mediums, 
in all spiritual centers throughout this planet. May we continue to evolve, study, and put into practice as much as we can in our daily lives, always being grateful for what we have. May we continue throughout the week with our study groups, return again next week. And in prayer and in great gra gratitude, we thank you, dear Lord. And may we continue to return again next week with our hearts full of gratitude. We thank you. And with that in mind, we ask permission to close our meeting tonight. So be it.